What is up y'all, this is Andy with Poster Grind and today we're gonna create this easy wraparound text in Photoshop. We're gonna be messing around with the type tool, the warp tool, a little bit of layer styles, some gradients, some texture, and a little bit of camera raw at the end to get an awesome treatment. Now before we do get started, I wanna mention that I picked up the photography, the gradient, and a couple other things over at Envato.com, as well as another texture from texturelabs.org. I'll go ahead and put the link in the description below. To start out, I'm going to get this background dialed in. So I have this paper texture. I'm going to go ahead and drop this below our subject and then turn off my texture grouping and turn off my subject. And then now I'm going to add an adjustment layer. So I'm going to go to my adjustment layers and go to exposure. Then I'm going to drop this exposure to create a black texture. So I'm going to drop this all the way down to six. Now I'm going to go back up to my subject and we're going to mask our subject out. And if you have a solid background, the best and easy way to do this is to go up to select, select subject. That's going to select out our subject. Then we can just hit the mask button over here. And now it's masked out. From here, we're going to convert this to a smart object by right clicking convert to smart object. Let's get this typography crown rocking. To start, I'm actually going to turn off our exposure on that background. Then I'm going to go back up to our subject layer, hit new layer, then hit T on your keyboard to bring up the type tool. And then I'm gonna type out King. Then I'm gonna hit Command T, scale it up. So I get a proper size for the crown, something like that. And if you're curious, I'm using Baroque Text JF font. Now I'm gonna make a copy of that layer, of that text layer by hitting Command J. And this will be our top layer. And from here, I'm going to hit Command T again, right click, go to warp. And on a warp, we're gonna head over here to the warp section and switch it from arc to cylinder. Then I'm gonna drag this up just a tad to mimic our crown. Now I'm gonna go back down to that bottom text layer, hit Command T, right click, and we're gonna flip this horizontal. Then we're gonna do the same thing, right click, warp, go up to our warp section and switch that to cylinder as well. And then we're just gonna drop, or actually drag that up just a little bit and hit Enter. From here we can drop that back layer below the subject. Then we're just gonna link these layers so that they're linked together. Hit, holding down Command, I'm gonna select that top text layer. Then I'm gonna right click and go to Link Layers. Now these layers are linked, so one is going behind the subject and one stays in front. Then I'm gonna hit Command T and it's going to select both of those layers and we're just going to place our crown on our subject with a little bit of an angle. Let's go ahead and turn our background black again. So I'm gonna turn on that exposure. Then I'm gonna work on the top text layer of the crown and I'm gonna double click. And then I'm gonna go down to gradient overlay, click that. And I already have a gradient selected from a gradient pack I picked up on Envato. So I've selected one out of there. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm actually going to increase the opacity to 91. Hit OK. Then I'm going to do the same thing on our bottom text layer. Double click, gradient overlay, and I'm actually going to drop the opacity down to 31. Hit OK. Let's go ahead and add a shadow of the crown. So I'm going to hit Command J on that top text layer. Then I'm going to drag it below that layer. Then we have to turn off the link. So I'm going to right click unlink layers. Now that one's unlinked. Then we're going to actually turn it black by double clicking. Then we're going to go to color overlay. Make sure that your color is on black. And then we can turn off the gradient overlay as well. Then hit OK. Then I'm going to hit V on the keyboard and drop that shadow down and then to the left a little like that. Now I'm going to right click and convert to smart object. Then we're going to blur it a little bit by going up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll just, let's go ahead and put it at three pixels. 
hit OK. And from here, we're gonna mess with the blending mode. We're gonna go to darken, and then let's drop the opacity a little bit. Then let's double click and go to layer styles and mess with our blend if on underlaying layer. So I'm gonna hold down the option key, drag the slider to the right, and then I'm gonna use the white slider, option key held down again, and drag that slider over to the left like that. Now the thing is, is we need to actually mask out a little bit of that shadow. Now I'm gonna add that masking layer, hit B on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna paint with black, just paint out certain areas where that might be affecting our background later on, something like that. It's probably a good time to add a little bit of gold texture to our crown. So I'm gonna go up to our textures, bring in our gold foil, drop that down above our crown. Then I'm gonna use a clipping mask to attach this texture to our type. So I'm gonna hit Option, Command, G, and now that clipping mask is affecting that type layer. And it's really subtle, but it's exactly what we need. And now from here, we're gonna actually adjust the blend mode to screen, like so. From here, we're going to start treating our subject. First, I'm gonna go down to our gradient map adjustment layer. And I'm gonna make sure it's on black and white. And same thing, I'm going to use a clipping mask and clip that to our subject by hitting Option Command G. Then I'm gonna click on our subject and I want all of my following layers below that gradient map. And the first one we're gonna do is a curves adjustment layer. So going to curves adjustment layers and that automatically attaches because it's below our gradient. So this is only going to affect our subject. We're gonna add some contrast by creating an S curve. Same thing, we're gonna add another curves. We're gonna to go to our subject layer, adjustment layer, curves. And then here we're going to actually darken our subject by increasing our darks, something like that. And then once again, we're gonna click on our subject, add a curves. And on this one, we're actually gonna darken out our hair a little bit. So I'm dropping this down. Then I'm gonna click on the curves mask, hit Command I, and then hit B on my keyboard. And then painting with white, I'm gonna paint in on the hair so the hair's got a little bit of a shadow behind our crown like that. And I'm actually gonna make some adjustments on our skin going up to that layer that we actually darkened. So hitting B on my keyboard and painting with black, I'm actually gonna paint some of these highlights back in, especially near the shadow, so that that shadow from the crown pops a little more to give it some dimension. And I'm actually going to brighten up his eye so we can see the eye a little better and add a little here. To stay organized, I'm actually going to group our subject later, layers. So going to our top layer, holding down the shift key, I'm going to click on our subject, then hit command G, and we're just going to name this subject. Now we're organized. Looking at our subject, I noticed that the shoulder is kind of blending in with the background a little too much. So I'm gonna go back down to that darken curves and paint back in a little bit more light down here so that we can actually see the shoulder. Now let's go up to our top layer, our foil layer. Then we're gonna hit new layer. We're actually gonna take a snapshot of everything that we've already done and then we can start working on the treatment. So I'm gonna hit shift option command E. Now we've merged all of our layers below. I'm gonna right click convert to smart object. Then we're gonna go up to filter, camera raw, and we're gonna make some really amazing adjustments. Starting off with our light, we're going to decrease our exposure to negative 0.25. Contrast, we're going to go to plus 25. Highlight to two. Shadows to negative nine. Whites plus three. And blacks, we're gonna leave at zero. From here, we can go to our color. And on temperature, we're gonna go to negative eight. Then on tint, we're gonna go to negative five. Then on vibrance, we're gonna go to plus one. And then on saturation, we'll go to negative four. Then on effects, we'll go to plus 62 on texture, plus 43 on clarity. Then on dehaze, we're gonna go to negative 32. And then on vignette, we'll go to negative 12. Then on grain, we'll go to 54. Then let's go down to detail. And on detail, we're gonna increase the sharpening, then hit okay. And one of the final things we can do is to add one final thing of texture. So I'm going up to my texture folder. And on texture, we're gonna drop this to screen. And then we're gonna reduce the opacity to 25. Then we're gonna create a mask hit B on the keyboard, 
And I just want to paint away some of the scratches on the face. So painting with black, I'm just going to paint away certain areas on the subject. And there you go, guys. We've created this awesome image. Hope you dug it. And hopefully I see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.